On this worksheet, we're going to do some basic NMR analysis. So we are going to have an NMR, a proton NMR spectrum, along with a molecular formula, and we're going to use this information to determine the structure of the molecule. The plan that we're going to take when we go through these analysis, number one, start with the molecular formula and calculate the HDI just to give us some initial information about presence of double bonds or rings or things like that. Then we're going to look at the integration, make sure that the integral that we calculate matches up with the number of hydrogen atoms in the formula. And then once we get the integration figured out, we're going to start drawing fragments or portions of the molecule that are consistent with the splitting pattern um, and the integration for each peak. And then we'll put it all together to make one molecule. Sounds pretty overwhelming, um, but you'll definitely get the hang of it pretty quickly. So here's the first um, structure that we have. We're going to begin by doing the HDI calculation. This is done by taking three times the number of carbon atoms, which is six, plus two, which gives us eight. Subtract the number of hydrogens and subtract our halogen iodine to zero. So this is an HDI of zero. That means we don't have to worry about double bonds, triple bonds, rings, anything like, anything like that. The next thing that we're gonna do is focus on our integration. Our integrals here are 325 and 1981. We want to divide both of these by 325 to get the uh, ratio of the protons or hydrogen atoms in this molecule. 1981 divided by 325 is 6. So this is telling us, our integrals are telling us that there is one hydrogen atom that's generating this peak right here and there are six hydrogen atoms that are generating this peak right here. And the total number of hydrogen atoms that we've calculated um, is consistent with the number of hydrogen atoms in the formula, so that means that our integrals look good. Now what we're going to do is try to draw a fragment of the molecule that is consistent with the integral, one hydrogen, and the splitting. This is a septet. Um, and so I'm going to begin, first of all, by just drawing the one hydrogen. That uh, one hydrogen means that we have one hydrogen atom. It doesn't have any other equivalent hydrogen atoms. So on the carbon atom, there are, on the carbon atom that's holding this hydrogen, there are no hydrogens, no other hydrogens attached. So this one hydrogen all by itself, not any other hydrogens on that same carbon. So this is the this fragment that I've drawn here corresponds to this hydrogen. Now the this hydrogen right here is split into a septet. That means n plus one equals seven because it's split into a septet. So that means that n equals six for this hydrogen atom. Its n is six. N remember n is the neighbors, the hydrogen atoms that are within three bonds. So this hydrogen atom all by itself has a total of six neighbors that are within three bonds. When we see a total of six neighbors, usually what that means is that there are two methyl groups for this hydrogen atom. Actually, I'm gonna draw those, draw out those methyl groups. So six almost always corresponds to two methyl groups, two groups of three. This hydrogen atom has one, two, three, all of these are three bonds away, so this hydrogen atom has one, two, three, four, five, six neighbors, and that would cause it to split into a septet. So this is a fragment that I've come up with that's consistent with this peak. Now if we go over to this peak over here, this peak is integrating at six hydrogen, and it looks like we've kind of already figured out six hydrogen that are equivalent to each other. And it is um, splitting into a doublet, so that means uh, as a doublet, n n plus 1 equals 2 it's because it's a doublet so that means n is 1 that means that these six hydrogens these six hydrogens each have one neighbor and here is their one neighbor so this um, this fragment that i've drawn is consistent with both of the peaks right here what's going on with this last bond what's happening right here well, remember that we have an iodine atom in this molecule and so that's where it's located not too tricky let's move on and try another one so for our second spectrum we have C2H4Cl2 let's begin by calculating the HDI 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6 that's the maximum number of hydrogen 
minus the four hydrogen that we have and the two chlorine atoms, we have another HDI of zero. Now let's work on the integrals. We have 673 and we have 1990. 1990 divided by 673 is 2.95, we'll call that a three. So this is integrating, uh, the ratio here is one hydrogen atom to three hydrogen atoms. Let's compare that to our formula. We have a total of four. One plus three is four, so our integrals look perfect. If we have a fragment of one hydrogen atom, that means one hydrogen atom on a carbon with no other hydrogen atoms on the same carbon. We could do the same thing over here. Um, this is three hydrogen atoms, so that means three hydrogen atoms on this carbon with no other hydrogen atoms, looks like that. This guy is a quartet, that means n plus one equals four because it's a quartet, that means n equals three. So that's telling us that this hydrogen by itself has three neighbors. Here's three neighbors. Boom, there we go. And let's just make sure that that's consistent. These three hydrogen are split into a doublet. That means N plus one equals two because it's a doublet. N equals one. That means that these three hydrogens have one neighbor. Perfect. What are we gonna put in these last two bonds? There's a couple of chlorine atoms in the molecule. So that's where they'll go. Let's try another one. And notice that we haven't had to pay any attention to shift at all to figure this stuff out. It hasn't been necessary yet. It's not always going to be unnecessary, but in this case it is. C4H9Br. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, minus the 9 hydrogens and the 1 bromine, another HDI of 0. Now we're going to analyze our integrals. Our smallest number is 325. So this is corresponding to one hydrogen. Our quintet at 665, that is uh, most likely gonna be two hydrogen, I'll double check. So this right here is two hydrogen. Our doublet, 325, 967 divided by 325 is three hydrogen. So there's three hydrogen right there. And this triplet also will be three hydrogen. Let's add them up. One plus two plus three plus three adds up to nine. We have nine, looks good. We need to draw some fragments. Uh, starting with this guy, our sextet. We have one hydrogen on this carbon, no other hydrogens on the same carbon. It's a sextet, so that means N plus one is six. So N is five, that's kind of tricky. Um, when I get like an n equals 5, I'm just going to set this aside. <laughs> like, I'm going to figure that one out later. Let's come over to this guy. We've got two hydrogen atoms, so let's draw those two hydrogen atoms with nothing else and figure out that splitting. That's a quintet, so n plus 1 equals 5 because it's a quintet. n equals 4. That's another one that's kind of tricky. Um, because n equals four, maybe that means it has four neighbors. So maybe that means that there's two hydrogens over here and two hydrogens over here. Or maybe it means that there's like three hydrogens here and one hydrogen over here. It's another one that's kind of tricky. So it's another one that I'm just going to kind of set aside and we'll figure that one out later. Uh, we've got the next up here, we have a doublet, three hydrogens as a doublet. I'm going to really move this one out of the way. Uh, three hydrogens first. We want to draw the three hydrogens like that. And then they are a doublet. So that means n plus one equals two because it's a doublet. So that means n equals one. This one's an easier one. We can manage this. One hydrogen atom as their neighbor. And there can't be any hydrogen atoms here at all. Now maybe, possibly, this guy fits right here. That might be, that might be what we have going on. We'll set this one up here. And then the last peak that we have, three hydrogen atoms, again, so we'll draw that fragment, three hydrogen atoms, and it is a triplet, n plus one equals three, that means n equals two. So that means that this guy has two 
neighbors right there. And you know what? We've got this guy right here that probably is going to fit right in. So I'm going to, um, in a situation like this, I'm going to make those assumptions. I'm going to take this fragment and I'm going to assume that this piece belongs right here. So I'm just going to kind of set it aside. And I'm going to take this fragment and I'm going to assume that this piece belongs right here and set it aside. And then I'll come back and double check to make sure that that makes sense. So what I want to do now is take these two portions of the molecule and fit them together. Um, so I'm going to actually have to redraw this guy, turn it around. So I'm going to read, I'm going to turn it around so that I can fit it, fit the two fragments together like that. And then I can erase this piece because I redrew it. And then our last little empty bond right there, we're gonna fill in with the bromine. So the last thing that we need to just double check is to make sure that this peak right here is actually consistent with being placed in this part of the molecule. This we said is a sextet, meaning that it has five neighbors. So this guy right here, it has one, two, three, four, five neighbors. So that worked out well. I'm gonna erase this fragment. And this last piece right here, that was our quintet, meaning that it would have four neighbors, one, two, three, four. So that also worked out perfect. There's our structure. We have a couple more to go. Let's take a look at our next one. C -H C3H4Br2. Three times two is six plus two is eight. Minus four minus two, this gives us an HDI of one. So we have a double bond or a ring. Now let's check our integrals. Our smallest number is 968. So there's a one. 968 is going to be another one. 968, probably a two. That's a two, two hydrogen. So we have one hydrogen for this peak, one hydrogen for this peak, and two hydrogens for this peak. And we wanna make sure that they add up to four. One plus one plus two is four. Now let's start drawing our fragments. One hydrogen all by itself that's split into a doublet. That means N plus one, N plus one equals two. So that tells us that N equals one. So this guy, this guy right here has one neighbor. Um, and I got to draw these empty bonds on here to make sure to not put anything else on there. Now our next one over, basically the exact same situation. One hydrogen with one neighbor. And, and probably it's, you know, I kind of feel like it's probably this guy, but I'm gonna redraw it anyway. So one hydrogen with one neighbor, nothing else going on. And then over here, we have a singlet, uh, two hydrogens as a singlet. So we have two hydrogen atoms on that same carbon, nothing else. And then because it's a singlet, so n plus one equals one, that means n equals zero. So that means that they don't have any neighbors nearby. This one is a little bit tricky. Like, how are we gonna go about figuring this out? I do remember, don't forget that we do have a double bond present. There's a double bond somewhere in the molecule. And these peaks are so far shifted, like this, this level of chemical shift typically means that these are hydrogen atoms that are part of a carbon-carbon double bond. So we've got these two hydrogen atoms that are almost certainly part of a carbon-carbon double bond. Let's see if we can just kind of redraw the way that these guys are looking. Like maybe they're kind of like this, looking like that on the same carbon atom. Um, and then we have like a third carbon atom that we have to fit in there somewhere. And like I said, this one's pretty tricky. So we've got two hydrogen atoms that are part of a double bond. They won't be equivalent to each other as long as this is an asymmetrical alkene. So if I put one hydrogen atom right here, that would work. No, it wouldn't because then it would be splitting. So we put something right there, not a hydrogen atom. We could put two more hydrogen atoms out here on the end. We could fit our bromines in like that. Um, what just happened? What just happened? 
So what I did there um, was I said, okay, I recognize that these peaks are so far shifted that these hydrogen atoms are most likely on the carbon-carbon double bond. And if they're on the carbon-carbon double bond, there's two options for them. They could either be on the same carbon of the double bond or they could be on adjacent carbons like this, like that. I just tried this first. It's kind of a guess and check. Like you try this and if it doesn't work, try this. I got lucky trying that one first. So I tried putting them on the same carbon right there. And then I just added my carbon number two and my carbon number three to the chain. There's only one way to arrange three carbon atoms if it's not a ring. I knew that I couldn't put another hydrogen atom on this position because if I put another hydrogen atom on this position, the splitting of all of these hydrogen atoms would be completely different. Instead of only splitting each other into doublets, they would be split by this hydrogen atom out here as well. So the splitting would be more than a doublet. So I put a halogen right here because it wouldn't split anything. And then all that I had left was to fit in these last two hydrogen on the end with the second halogen. And that makes these hydrogens too far away to be split by the others. So I got kind of lucky by my first initial sort of guess and check thing. Let's do one more. C8H10. 8 times 2 is 16. Plus 2 is 18. Minus 10 is 8. Divided by 2 equals 4. We've learned in the past when we have an HDI of 4 that that almost always corresponds to a benzene ring. In addition to that, peaks at about seven parts per million almost always correspond to a benzene ring. So this is the area where we expect to see benzene hydrogens in the HNMR spectrum. Let's do our integrals. Our smallest number is 2077. So we're gonna divide everything by 2077. 5292 divided by 2077 is 2.5. This is gonna be one. 2077, 3015 divided by 2077 is 1.5. When we um, look at this, first of all, we've got half hydrogen, so it doesn't make sense. If we add these up, 2.5 plus 1 is 3.5, plus 1.5 is 5 total hydrogen. We have 10 total hydrogen, so we want to multiply everything by 2. Remember, the integrals gives us the smallest ratio of hydrogens. We, sometimes we have to multiply to get the correct number. Five plus two plus three is 10, so that looks good. We can start right here with this guy. Notice that we're not giving information about the splitting, but we know that this peak corresponds to benzene and there's five hydrogens on the benzene ring. So we know a little bit right off the bat that there's gonna be five hydrogen atoms on this benzene ring and something else, which is gonna have to be a carbon. Over here, we have two equivalent hydrogen atoms. I can draw those guys. And we can actually figure this splitting out. This is one, two, three, four. So this is a, the splitting on this is a quartet. N plus one equals four because it's a quartet. So that tells us that N equals three. So this guy has three neighbors. And our last fragment, we have three hydrogen atoms right here. Let's take a look at the splitting. One, two, three. That's split into three. So n plus one equals three, a triplet. That means n equals two. So this guy has two neighbors. These two fragments are just identical to each other. We're looking at CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3. We have nowhere else to put them but right here, CH2, CH3.